Hi everyone, this is Tamu. Welcome to my channel, The Cloud Security Guy. Uh, in case you're new here, I talk on a weekly basis about you know cloud security, artificial intelligence, and cybersecurity, general cybersecurity career advice. So as we are almost now crossing the half, we have crossed the halfway mark of uh, 2022. I thought it would be a good idea to do a recap, you know, where we stand today when it comes to cloud security risks and their countermeasures. You know, times have changed now. The pandemic is fading away, but uh, we are like growing fears of a recession and uncertain economic times across the world. And CIOs across the world are under pressure to reduce costs. So you're going to be adopting cloud computing, whether you like it or not. So it's not an if, it's a when question, right? And I think just to give perspective, worldwide spending on cloud is forecasted to grow around 20% this year up and it's going to keep on going up. It's the market is expected to reach around 600 billion as per Gartner. So you can imagine, but despite this, it's a very stressful job, right? Uh, and I thought it would be a good idea to just take a look at what are the top, very top five, like cloud security risks and what are the countermeasures. And this is taken from the professional reports. You have a lot of reports going around. What are the key risks? So I thought it'd be a good idea to just recap the top five cloud security risks and their countermeasures. So let's get going on this. Uh, before we start, guys, please do like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps the channel to grow. And I'm trying to create useful content as much as possible to help people in their cloud security careers. It will really help to be a lot to, for the channel to grow and reach the maximum amount of people. Thank you in advance for that. Okay, so what is the first risk that I want to talk about when it comes to cloud security? What's the first cloud security risk? That would be, of course, a skills shortage. And this is a major, major problem when it comes to cloud security across the board. Take, take it from me who's interviewed, God knows how many people. There are many, many cloud computing people, with cloud, cloud professionals present in the market. And there are very, very good cyber security professionals present in the market. We do not have enough uh, people who have both of these skills, which is cloud security. There's a big, big shortage of that. And that becomes very evident. Uh, so in a rush, what happens in a rush to adopt cloud, a lot of companies, you know, they budget for technical tooling, but they completely forget to upskill their staff. And this is why this major cloud security risk comes up, which is a lack of skills, okay? And a lot of time I've interacted with so many cybersecurity teams across the globe, okay? Mem a lot of times they are not equipped when it comes to cloud security skills. What happens? They end up relying too much on commercial tools, like they plug in third-party tools and they just rely on that, okay? And or they what they do is they outsource it to some consultant or a service provider. And okay, th these things will work in the short term, but neither of them are a good long term solution. Okay. And if you so just ask yourself this question, I want you to ask this question. Do you have these skills? Do you know about infrastructure as code? Can you do that? Okay. Uh, can you do serverless? Can you do containers? If none of those skills you have or your team does not have, then it is now is the time to start investing in it. And because the cloud is based around a lot of these technologies. Okay. So there are two things you can do. One is obvious thing is certification. I have done a video on that. You can look at it, my channel, what certifications you should do. But the more important thing is actual hands-on experience with infrastructure as code, containers and serverless. Without these things, you your team will not have, they won't be able to add value uh, to the cloud security discussions. Okay. And you will have only theoretical knowledge. So start your cloud security certifications, but please do get hands-on with cloud security projects also. I have a video, I'll link it, about how what sort of hands-on experience you should get, okay? Remember the cloud has a learning curve, which you need to accommodate in your projects, okay? And if you and your team, you give your team time enough to get ready and upskill, they will, it will really pay off in the long run and the team will also appreciate the investment which you're doing, okay? Okay, so that is from the upskilling perspective. What's the biggest, the second biggest uh, cloud security risk? And what's the countermeasure? Uh, the other risk I see is copy pasting on-prem security. What do I mean by that copy pasting on-prem security? Well, so a side effect of the previous problem, not having skills is com what companies do is they don't tap into the native power of the cloud. cloud and what they do is they copy paste the existing security controls they have on-prem into the cloud. They don't realize that the cloud is a different type of uh, tech environment, okay, from on-prem. And it can, you can really revamp your security model, like things like incident response, security monitoring. A lot of times I've seen people, they just monitor what is happening on the cloud. It goes to a SOC team and they get email alerts. They don't realize you can completely automate end-to-end -end everything that is there in the cloud. 
So you need to understand you cannot copy paste what is happening on prem to the cloud. It, it is different in many ways. Okay. W what are some of the ways cloud security differs? Okay. Uh, just a few things. Cloud security is completely API driven. Okay. It's all, it's all software. There's no appliances. So you need to have those skills. I need to remember that everything you can be called by API so you can automate a lot of stuff. Okay. Secondly, the cloud security is something which is shared between you and the cloud provider. Okay. Some things you will be doing, but some things you will not have visibility on. And that will be relying on the cloud provider. And thirdly, cloud is fast. I mean, very, very fast. Changes happen like this. And you need to have controls kick in immediately and you need to have auto remediation. What does that mean? Like if an incident happens, the cloud can immediately jump in and fix it even before you get the alert. Like if somebody exposes the S3 bucket to the internet, you can have controls there which can jump in and shut it down. So even by the time you get the email, the incident will have closed. Okay. So this is why it's so important to realize you can't just copy paste on prem to the cloud. Okay. How to solve this problem? Uh, similar to the previous problem, the best way is to upskill your staff, get them hands off knowledge of the hands on knowledge of the cloud. Okay. You can link these things with your annual appraisal and incentives. It will really help to create a competitive environment and further motivate your staff to innovate in the cloud, to learn about the cloud. Okay. Awareness is the best tool here, honestly speaking. Okay. What's the third? So let's take a look at the third most uh, like uh, number three on the cloud security risks and what's the countermeasure. The third major risk, which is there is cloud identity. What do I mean by cloud identity? Another big challenge, which is always there is that not having a proper identity strategy in place when you move to the cloud. Okay. The cloud is such that it, it's accessible outside your security perimeter. Okay. And cloud projects usually involve providing access to partners, consultants. This puts a huge burden on your service desk. And what happens? It can lead to misconfigured permissions and the surface attack area for an attacker. It increases. Okay. Your identity becomes a firewall and you should, it, you should give it as much importance. Your user IDs, your service principles, as much importance as a firewall. Okay. And don't even, if you are, have a multi-cloud environment, like don't even think about going to a multi-cloud environment without having a proper strategy in place. So this is what will happen. What is the best control for this? The best control for this is having a single sign-on. Okay. I made a video on that. What is cloud single sign-on? With single sign-on in place, you can have a single source of truth. You can start focusing on enforcing multi-factor authentication, logging, and other intelligent controls. But SSO has to be there first. Okay. Good thing is most cloud providers they already provide this functionality. Okay. So there's no excuse not to have this enabled right from the start. Okay. It will really make your life easier. If you have multiple cloud environments, you can't be creating IDs separately for each of them. I can assure you, you will have some major problems with permissions later on, because what happens is people say the management sees the value out of the cloud. They will start adding more and more users. Your environment will become more and more complex. If you have SSO enabled right from the start, then you can actually put a halt there and you can have a proper baseline. So make sure this is there right from the start. Okay. Okay. What's the next uh, major cloud security risk and a countermeasure, which is oh, misconfiguration. I think anybody who's worked in the cloud, I think you should understand what I'm talking about here. The, the cloud is like very, very easy to fix, right? I mean, it's very, very easy to make changes. You can like uh, deploy infrastructure with one button click. Okay. It's a dream for, like IT teams, it is also one of the major reasons why you have breaches happening in the cloud. Why? Because of misconfiguration, not because of a hacker, but because your team, the IT team, they don't know what they're doing and they accidentally expose insecure infrastructure to the cloud. And because the security team don't have visibility, uh, they won't find out about it. Okay. Because they're not aware. So this becomes an even bigger problem in multi cloud. Okay. Because each cloud has their own set of technology and controls. One click. One click is all it needs to deploy a production database over the internet and your CISO will go crazy and unfortunately it will get hacked and attackers will be very happy. Okay. So the most simple countermeasure for this, which I've talked about before I linked the video is having a cloud security posture management solution. CSPM usually call it, right? It enables centralized visibility and it will give you automatic remediation. If they are too costly, then most cloud providers, they have their own native solutions available. Okay. Which are cheaper. But if you have a multi-cloud environment, then definitely invest in this. Don't, don't be cheap on this. It's absolutely worth it in the long run. It will save you grief. And you can make the business case for CISOs. You can tell them that you'll get executive dashboards, giving you a single service dashboard for multi-clouds. A lot of times I've seen CISOs, they like that or the management likes this and they approve the budget based on this only. Okay. 
Okay, lastly, what's the last major cloud security risk? And like, what's the countermeasure? That would be data leakage. That is one of the biggest problems I've seen. Uh, similar to the previous challenges and risks, right? The cloud makes sharing data very, very easy and convenient, a little bit too convenient. That's the problem. Sharing a document with a party can be done with the click of a button, right? And it can completely bypass your internet and email and the other DLP controls you have in place. And this document can be accessed by any person, usually with the link. And you can forward it. You won't find out about it. It's a, like a data leakage nightmare. Similarly, things like S3 buckets or Azure folders or whatever you have, they can get exposed, leading to sensitive data being leaked out. And you're, you'll get exposed to data like uh, lawsuits. Okay, data leakage has always been one of the biggest problems in the cloud, right? It's one of the biggest cloud security risks. And it's usually one of the major reasons people don't adopt the cloud because they're so scared of this. So what can you do? Well, you can block the cloud, your, your cloud environment from being accessed from the internet, but that is not a practical solution. It really doesn't give you the benefit of the cloud and you have consultants coming in, contractors coming in. It won't work in the long term. Okay. So the best thing about it is usually you should have like a cloud security access broker. It's like the cloud DLP, cloud access security broker, sorry, CAS. It's like a cloud DLP. It can discover what sensitive information is there in the cloud. It can block attempts to like steal data from cloud environments. It's usually the best tool, whether you have a single environment or a multi-cloud environment, okay? So do take a look at this from the cloud DLP perspective, a cloud access security broker. If you want me to make a like more, more detailed video on this, let me know and I'm happy to accommodate. But these are the major cloud security risks, guys, and their countermeasures, which I wanted to discuss. Uh, if you found this video useful, uh, please do like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, good luck to you on your cloud security journey. Like I've mentioned before, cloud gives you an opportunity to completely revamp your model. So it's a great way to take a look at it. Do upskill yourself. Do get some hands-on uh, experience with the cloud. Uh, look at my previous videos. And I wish you all the best in your cloud security career. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.